Let's take a look at an example of a problem in which we're going to use logarithmic differentiation to find the derivative of the expression. So remember with logarithmic differentiation we're going to use the laws of logarithms to first expand the given expression and then we employ implicit differentiation to actually find the derivative. So let's start by taking the natural log of both sides. There is a reason we use the natural log as opposed to the regular log in some other base. So we would have the natural log of y on the left. Now on the right, when we take the natural log of that quotient, remember it's going to be the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. And that's according to the laws of logarithms. Now, I'm going to rewrite that square root as an expression, the x squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half. Now, we can use the laws of logarithms again on the right side. Remember that each of those exponents can pop to the front. So now we're there, and we can use implicit differentiation to now do the derivative. Now this is why we use natural log, because the derivative of natural log is simply 1 over the expression times the derivative of the expression. It's a nice, easy rule to use. So the derivative of natural log of y on the left would be 1 over y times dy dx. Remember, with implicit differentiation, you're taking the derivative with respect to x. So anytime you have a derivative of a y term, remember that we insert dy dx to denote that we are taking the derivative with respect to x. Now on the right side, everything's in terms of x. So really it would be dx dx that we'd be multiplying by, but that of course is 1. So derivative of 2 times the natural log of the quantity x minus 2, we keep the 2 as the coefficient, and it's 1 over x minus 2 minus, now we have the 1 half. Now for the derivative of natural log of x squared plus 1, that's going to require the chain rule. So we would have 1 over x squared plus 1, but then we need to multiply by the inside derivative, which simply would be 2x. So we can start simplifying on that right side of the equal sign. You'll notice that the 2's over here cancel out. So we can just simply condense this a little bit. Now for our final step, remember that we're trying to solve for dy dx that denotes our derivative. So what we'll need to do is multiply both sides by y so that we have dy dx by itself on the left. So that gives us dy dx equals y times 2 over x minus 2 minus x over x squared plus 1. It's perfectly acceptable to leave our answer like that. Remember that with implicit differentiation, we often had both x's and y's in our answer. Another option, and you will see this sometimes as well, is to substitute in place of this y the expression you were given at the very beginning for y, which in this case was x minus 2, that quantity squared, over the square root of x squared plus 1. Really, either way is fine. Sometimes you'll see it one way, sometimes you'll see it another way. Um, you could even, if you were to make the substitution, keep going and maybe distribute over the big parenthesis quantity and maybe simplify a little bit more, but it's not really necessary. So it would be perfectly fine to stop at that first line where you see the answer as y times the quantity 2 over x minus 2 minus x over x squared plus 1.